So you kind of touched on the Strauss report, and I think I think yes. this is a good transition here. Um, I think you and I both know that the discussion around Strauss isn't going to go away anytime soon. Um, so we know that there's ongoing litigation. We know that there's ongoing mediation. We know that the off university is offering free counseling um, to those affected by Strauss. And now we know that the number of people um, joining these class action lawsuits has topped 300. Um, so kind of stepping out of your role as university president, what are your thoughts as both a person but and also a medical professional? Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm I'm one person. I don't step out of my self. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'll just be the same. And uh, I'd say that the first thing I think about with this is what a, a, a horrific uh, a tragedy it was. How what how what a terrible thing it was. Uh, how awful I feel for each and every one of the people who was uh, victimized by uh, uh, Dr. Strauss. I think it was horrible uh, uh, for them. Uh, it was awful. It's awful, period, for someone to be abused. Um, so, I, so, so that's awful. It's a terrible period. And I've said this before, and I'd say it again, that I appreciate so much that they, uh, those people who came forward to help, uh, sh by sharing their stories, help us get to the bottom of what happened. As a medical professor, it's then, a professional, it's doubly horrific that I mentioned trust. Here's someone who, in fact, abused a position of ultimate trust. It's one of the things that's most uh, precious to medical professionals is that you, you and your patients have trust. So I think that that's awful and uh, unspeakably awful. Uh, so I, I, I just would repeat myself by saying that this was awful. This was that ter terrible thing. And uh, I'm looking forward to progress. Uh, but it was an, a, a terrible thing. I'm, as I mentioned, we were uh, completely um, we were horrified uh, mm -hmm. to learn this and, and want to continue working through and uh, our, just have complete empathy and sympathy for the survivors and appreciate those who've come forward to help us learn about what happened so that we can uh, do what we can to be supportive of them and then also help others to uh, ad address these situations where they happen all over the, the country. We, we, sadly, you've seen this, I've seen this, uh, see how common these things seem to be in one way or another with one or two or then many and uh, it's something that we have to really explore as a country as a nation to try to do what we can to make ourselves safer. Yeah if mm -hmm. I may continue on that point um, yeah. in May you announced the creation of the National Sexual Abuse Task Force as it became like you said more and more apparent that situations like this yes. are less and less unique. Um, so what steps have been taken to implement that task force? Yeah, so we have, uh, we have a, a chair of the task force. Have we announced that yet? I don't know. So we haven't announced the, the I mean, I know who the chair is. So we have a chair of the task force. It was um, uh, waiting for this fall to, uh, to fall together. The, the, so there's a chair. There are members to the task force that are named. Uh, they are just now in the process of convening, I think this month. Uh, they'll convene for the first time. So we'll have an announcement shortly about who they are. And they're, uh, so that, that's all, so, but we have a chair and a task force that was named over the summer, and that work is beginning in September. And, and we're in September, so we'll have an announcement formally soon. Do you know when that announcement will be coming? Yeah, uh, soon. I don't know yeah. exactly when. I, I look at Chris sometimes because I just uh, don't, yes, we were. I remember that we in last month we said we'd be ready for an announcement in September, and I realize it's now September the ninth, and <laughs> so we so sometime within the next couple of weeks. But we're very pleased about the chair and the task force, mm -hmm. and looking forward to real meaningful work on, uh, from them. What are kind of the first steps for that task force now that we have um, kind of some people in positions yeah. to get that work started? You, you know, it will, it, it's an organic thing, so it will develop a little bit on its own, we'll see, but I imagine honestly that it would be similar to the mental health task force that we put in place a year and a half ago that we, uh, the, the, collect, the people on the task force would bring their perspective and expertise together and then they would be informed by experts from around the country and then come out with recommendations and suggestions uh, uh, over after having a, a period of reasonable deliberation. So that's what we're, we're looking for. And uh, that, that process has just started. Kind of like a recommendation implementation process that we saw with the state center for our task force staff. Yes, what can we learn? Mm -hmm. And then given what we've learned, what we can, can we do to make uh, the, the world a safer place? What can we do to enable survivors uh, to come forward in a supportive way? Uh, mm -hmm. that, those are the questions I'll be interested in hearing. Mm -hmm. and, but we'll also let them, if they 
again, we pulled together people with uh, great experience. They may develop additional things they wish to look for, but that's the, uh, that's the approach that we took in putting the task force together and asking pe people to join us. Mm -hmm. And you, you touched on the issue of, you know, trust, and obviously these people, they're in a place of power and they're in a place of access. Um, you mean the abusers? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, so, you know, in the case of, of Strauss or Nasser or anybody like that, they, they have kind of this extraordinary access to yes. people. Um, so in light of that, what steps is the university taking now to ensure that, um, you know, people in these places of access and power and trust are, are being held accountable? Yeah. So uh, a couple of things. So this power relationship abuse dynamic mm -hmm. has um, some of its awful uh, manifestations and things that we would see in the newspapers these days. But it, it extends throughout society. It goes all in an entire uh, um, span of the Me Too movement would be circumstances where individuals were um, uh, assaulted in one way or another by other individuals with relatively modest power differentials, uh, uh, but sufficient enough to be a power differential. And so I would say that the broader question for the society is how do we deal with this broadly? How do we empower people to um, uh, help? How, how do we l learn to decrease the circumstances under which someone would choose to abuse uh, someone else? How do we empower people to uh, resist that and make themselves safer? How do we react to the information that we have to make our communities uh, safer broadly? It's a, um, a terrific uh, uh, problem that if, well, if we look at, I'm sure, affects millions of people across the country. Mm -hmm. And it's often in silence, uh, often in shadows. And we'd love to be able to find a way to shine a light in those places to make them safer places. I, I have no, no magic answers. But I would say it's a it's a, a broad process. H here on campus, we have uh, even more recently, but over the last uh, um, uh, decades, uh, initiated a whole series of programs, modernized programs, updated programs. Our Office of Institutional Equity is new with a, a new director. We did a national search for a person with great experience in uh, in this area, and so we feel very good about that. We f we we'd our our goal is to be an exemplar of best practices. But this is another uh, very big area of, of, uh, of national challenge, and we're just continuing to do the best we can, uh, really do what we can to empower people uh, to come forward and to make it safe for them to come forward, and then to do what we can to reduce the opportunity for this abuse to take place. Mm -hmm. I, so, I, want, like, I want you all to be as safe as you can be. Yeah. And we want to do what we can to have a community that makes you as safe mm -hmm. as we can The first be. thing that comes to mind for me is, um, I know the Student Health Center has a chaperone policy. Um, is there anything similar to that that the university is doing or anything in the works in light of everything with Strauss? Anything specific? You know, I, <clears throat> so in light of Strauss, there, uh, we'd say uh, broadly that we have, there are enough, there are policies and procedures in place now that if we would use them and follow them, we'd uh, be safer. So with chaperone policies and escort policies and a variety of things that we have, the things that we've done with you from um, uh, Buckeyes Act, you know, all of those things were meant to try to make us a safer, a safer community to allow observers to, to not be an innocent bystander, to be a participatory bystander in, in circumstances that I would worry about you all finding yourselves under risk. So, so those are the kinds of things we'd like to continue to uh, propagate. And I will thank you. Um, uh, you and your fellow students for being so active uh, in these areas with us because you can step up and help us all be a safer community and we, we care very much about that. Mm -hmm. One thing that comes to mind, you know, specifically with Strauss is that it wasn't, you know, like something like the chaperone policy, it wasn't an issue that nobody knew. You know, we found that, yes. you know, people at the university knew and, you know, recently we just found out that state medical, people at the state medical board yes. knew about this as well. Um, so what can we do specifically, uh, and I guess what is in place now for people to report something like this? Because, you know, in this case, it wasn't an issue of people yes. not knowing or this just happening completely behind closed doors. 
Yeah, I, I would say now we have you know, a variety of hotlines and individuals and reporting relationships that make these that allow these things to come forward. They also have to be used, and so just think I mean, the number of you that are here mm -hmm. now. So with this number of people here now, you will know several examples of people who've been sexually assaulted while you're in college. Uh, friends or roommates or colleagues, I mean, I, it, it could be even one or another of you have had one of these experiences, something that happens. And how they are uh, followed up on or reported is uneven, even now. And what we want to do is to try to streamline those things, to make it that people can find ways to get help. And when there are, in a circumstance like happened uh, with Dr. Strauss, uh, even those decades ago, there were mechanisms to report this he was reported mm -hmm. uh, so that that ultimately happened it just happens it just has to happen faster and, and more effectively and and then those um, as we all read about last week the uh, uh, people in authority to receive these reports did not act in ways that we uh, today believe would be appropriate I believe that they didn't act in ways at that time would have been, I'm not gonna say I believe they didn't act appropriately at that time either and we'll learn more about that as we go forward. That was, again, part of our, our, our report, was to look at what happened and then who knew what about what happened so that we could do what we can to make ourselves a safer community going, coming forward. I hope that we're, I believe, we have many more mechanisms in place now, but I believe that we're a much safer community today, truly, and that we want to continue being safer tomorrow.